Hello and welcome to week 14 in biopsychology and wow, I don't know about you, but my metal roof is slamming with rain right now, if you hear that going on, but summer's close, this is good. Okay, so here in week 14, we have a chapter on cognitive functioning, and I really kind of narrow this down, and we're just looking at a few areas here of what we mean when we're talking about the cognitive functions from a biological lens. So the first one is our discussion is about left and right brainness or the myth thereof. Now, I say myth, but there's lateralization of the brain. There's no doubt, you know, the left part of the brain controls the right side of the body, you know, and stuff like that for the most part. But we can't really say that any particular cognitive process is solely located in one part of the brain. It is usually uh, our experience of the world is multifaceted, and it in, when we're thinking about something, it involves parts of the brain all over the place. So there's, there's not a whole lot of evidence supplying or supporting the idea of uh, strictly right brain and left brain processes, let alone personality. But I'm going to tell you, and the reason why I like having this discussion, is there's, there's realities that people experience where that kind of contrasts the science. And, you know, my, my favorite other examples when we talk about birth order, you know, oldest child and middle child and youngest child. And even though that principle has not it has not been supported in the literature. There's not enough significant evidence to say that there's these differences. My family, oldest, middle, youngest, I'm the youngest, middle brother, textbook, textbook that uh, Alfred Adler's theory of, of uh, first Firstborn, secondborn, and thirdborn being significantly important in our personality. You could write a textbook. Adler could have based that whole theory on my family. Three boys, and that's exactly how it worked out. So nonetheless, it makes for great conversation about left braininess and live and right brainness. And then and certainly the notion of brain plasticity. Uh, there have been known where people have had brain damage where functions that were primarily in the left brain that was damaged suddenly appeared to start happening in the right brain. So something going on there, we had to, even though there was missing tissue, the brain recognized, you know, that these systems had to be rewired and it actually moved over to the other side of the brain. So, wow, again, no pun intended, but mind blowing. So there's a discussion on right brain, left brain, and then the quiz pretty much definitions. We're looking at language at first, the two areas, Wernicke's area and Broca's area on in terms of understanding language and producing language, and then a reflection on the cognitive process of studying and why it may be beneficial for some people to be in a quiet room to do that. Notwithstanding that I know people in my classes have told me they need the TV on, they need to be around people, they can study in the middle of the food court at the mall and it works. Not this one. Way too much residual ADHD from my youth to be able to do that. I really need kind of, uh, I certainly can't have music on because that just drags my attention away. Um, sometimes I can do, you know, people around and I can just narrow my focus. But uh, to do that with headphones on, I'm just going to stop and I'll just start listening to the music. It's not, not my thing. But some reflection on why it might be beneficial for people to find a quiet space, particularly if they're going to do something pretty intensive. So, for example, if you personally sometimes run into difficulty or challenges uh, getting a particular challenging thing done, and you're used to being around people or noise or something like that, you might try it without that, you know, and trying to train yourself and give your brain the opportunity to really focus on something without any distractions and see if that helps your productivity. Who knows? So that's what we're going to be. We have the discussion and we have the quiz for chapter 14, and that's it. We are very close to the end. I think next week is our last content. 
So um, it's a good time to kind of review your everything that's been going on here. See if you're missing anything, if you're missing an assignment, missing a quiz, kind of, uh, you know, go, getting back to that and doing that so we can end the semester really strong. So we're like the, not the 11th hour, but the 10 and a half hour right now. And so, um, so concentrate on this, go back and find things that you might be missing and, um, and we're going to do well. So great work, everyone. We've been pleased with the discussions and everything that's going on. And I'll leave you with that. Make sure you get outside, even though it's pouring rain right now here, it's going to be sunny. Uh, summer's on its way and we in Maine are really always happy about that. So, um, Make sure you get outside, be well, and I will see you next time.